Hello again, I am Oliver from Lentus.com. In the first part of this tutorial we've modeled our snowman with all his props. Now it is time to add some scenery, snow particles, rendering and compositing. So enough talking, let's go. Alright, so we will start by uh, placing the camera to see uh, exactly the view that we are going to have about the scenery and the snowman. So we can place uh, some kind of mountains in the background and stuff. Alright, so I have a hidden camera here. All right, I always hide the camera and uh, and the light in this uh, in this layer here. So I have uh, you know the full scene uh, completely empty to work with the models. All right, so I'm going to take the camera, press dot to rotate around the 3D cursor. There go here, press zero, and uh, wow, this is crazy. With Shift F, I can rotate it. I can rotate it again like this, rotate it around the cursor, move it with G, and um, actually go full screen so you can see better what I'm doing. Uh, let's see, with Shift F again, let's go back, and Alright, I think something like this would be nice. Okay, because we can see both eyes, we can see the top of the of the hat, and um, but we actually need to change this a little bit so it's not falling down in the edges, alright? So it looks more like an actual floor. So let's actually select something back there. Press zero in the number to select the camera again. And we can move this uh, around a little, something like that. All right. Now what I can do is to press Shift D and move this around like this. Even scale it up, but press comma in the keyboard so we don't use the 3D cursor anymore. And um, we can just move this around, rotate it so we can have a different perspective, there we go, skeleton set, and uh, just keep moving it, uh, let's divide this actually, so I can see here the camera, and I can see here something like this, so we should separate this, maybe scale this in the x-axis or something, uh, and move it around. that. I can shift D to duplicate it again and rotate it back like this. Maybe rotate it like this, scale it. All right, as you can see, it's just playing with this stuff until we have something that we like. And even do it again. And again and again and again. Yes, in the C axis, something like that, and move it there. Okay, I need to to change something here because we are getting this clipped. So let's go to the view and increase the clipping to probably ten thousand. And Okay, I, I may have to change in the camera as well. So let's go here to the camera options. Let's actually make this a little smaller. And uh, the end will be at 1000. There we go. There we go. This was the problem. Something you have to keep in mind. And something like this. Okay. All right. So yeah, we already have our our background. Okay, now we need to set up later uh, a plane here with uh, some clouds and stuff. All right, that, you know, if you have um, I mean, image, probably you want to use a cylinder or whatever, but this is kind of an actual uh, still image. All right, so a plane that covers that area that the camera sees at the moment is uh, is more than enough. 
So now I have the camera. Uh, so I want to actually go ahead and start working on the materials and the lighting. All right. So um, let's actually add some basic materials. Uh, for that, I'm going to go here. Uh, first, save this. There we go. And uh, just uh, select one of this, right? All of them will have the same material, actually. And this will be called snow material. That's right. Color white. Yeah. So we select this, all these guys. We select this one as the last one. Control C and copy. Wow, materials are not here. Oh, maybe I'm missing something. All right, doesn't matter because we can do it with Control L to link and link the materials. So now all these objects are using as well the snow mat. And uh, let's check it with rendered. Okay, so they are completely white. Now what I'm gonna do is to actually take this uh, this lamp, convert it in a sun because I want a a sun to light this scene, and um, actually place it in a little cooler. Sounds like from this other side or maybe from this side, but more from the front. Um, okay. Something like this. Okay, maybe something like this for now. Or from the other side, what what's it like? Okay, here here you have to play with it because I for example I don't like a lot that this shadow from here uh covers the, the face, alright? This looks uh not very well. So something like this would be fine. And uh now let's actually work on the materials for the buttons and there we go the buttons so button button mat okay select this other one control l and copy the materials okay this instead of a diffuse it will be a mix shader the first one will be uh, diffuse and the second one will be a glossy oh sorry uh, where are you here glossy PSDF okay and now let's make it something darker like you know maybe some dark brown something like that and uh, let's put the glossy as well with something dark brown Something like that, okay. Now let's do the carrot. The carrot, I, I'm doing the very basic materials, right? Nothing very fancy. So it will be kind of orange. All right, something like that. I'll just go with the hat. Actually, let's call this carrot material. I'm not naming any object in the scene because this is a very simple scene. Right, but uh, in uh, when I'm doing a, actually a professional project, I spend some time naming everything in the scene, right? So if I need to do some change, uh, everything is uh, easily selectable, right? And I know how to find everything because it's correctly named. That's very important. So let's call this um, hat mat, and let's make it something dark like this. Like this, that's right. Okay, now let's go with the scarf. And in the scarf, we are going to do something a little more tricky. And I'll show you what it is. We are going to use two different materials. So we are going to have here a uh, scarf mat 01. All right, and then we are going to create another one. Uh, so Let's go to the face mode and select this alternatively because to these polygons we are going to add a different material. All right. Uh, usually in this kind of uh, objects, I, I used to use, um, you know,
pair numbers. Right, do it like this, okay. Pair numbers, because if you use uh, uneven numbers, um, you know, like 13 or something like that, if you want to do something like this, it won't fit, and you will end up with something uh, that selects uh, two faces together, all right? If you have even numbers, uh, all of this kind of stuff works uh, really good. So uh, just keep that in mind. So for this um, for these little objects, let's actually create a new slot, click on Assign, okay? And here create a new material, which will be called Scarf Mat 02. And so you can see it, just put it in a different color. And you can see the here how we have now two different colors. So this could be a light blue or something. And now we can just, you know, pick the one we want from the slots here and just tweak it. So there you have the result. So we can pick anything we want, like... Uh, Okay, I kind of like something like this. Okay, I don't want to spend uh, too many time, too much time on this. You know, just give you the method so you can do it. So something like this because uh, they are cold colors, cool colors, and uh, the background and everything will have uh, cool colors as well. So let's actually create the plane for the background. So let's create it from the camera. I have in the in the user preferences. I have uh, here in the editing uh, this option activated to align the objects to the view instead of the world. All right, so if I create a plane from the view, you can see how it's uh, completely aligned with the view. All right, so I have this, and uh, I can just take it back. Very to the back. All right. Put it kind of in the center and just scale it up. All right, and before I scale it up uh, even more, I will just add a material to it. This will be called BG Mat. Okay, and I'm gonna load uh, an image for this. So let me give me a second to just uh, search the image. Okay, I already have it. So I'm going to open here an UV image editor and just drag it there okay there we go so this will be my background okay just a painting I did a while ago so um, with this in mind here we have the logo background let's call it just background this doesn't affect the file in the disk all right this only affects this uh, data block in blender all right so now this image inside blender is called background PNG all right so we can go here and uh, here in the color Let's uh, use an image texture, and from the list we can pick the background. And uh, this is happening because we don't have still UVs applied to this. So let's unwrap it, there we have it. And uh, let's actually do nothing because we can rotate it now. Something like 90 degrees for example, there we go. And uh, what I'm going to do now is to actually use an emissive one and uh, well I have to set this up again or no I, I haven't alright so let's scale this up there we go so I have something like this uh, don't worry if uh, it doesn't look very very cool because we are actually going to tweak it then in uh, compositing right so don't, don't uh, be afraid of that, uh, because actually what I'm going to do now is to select this plane, press M, and move it to the second layer. Because later, uh, what I'm going to do is to um, take it from the compositing, you know, in a different render layer, and composite it with the image in the front, so it will look cool. Okay, so now it's time to uh, adjust the lighting. So just join these two areas and start working on the lighting. Uh, let's increase the value, the intensity of this light here. So let's go here to the light options and here uh, let's use notes and increase the strength. Kind of a big deal. And give it a kind of a bluish tone. Alright, so it fits better the background. Right, so even if we are going to 
uh, tweak later the background. Just uh, keep in mind that we can uh, do it from here. Okay, another thing that I'm going to do is to actually uh, start trying the depth of field to see how it looks. So let's go here to the camera options, all right? Select the camera, go to the camera options, and in the depth of field channel, just uh, increase the size. All right, and uh, let's see how this is called. This is called ta -ta 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 -ta, Cube 001, which is actually the snow man body right that's why using a good name in a strategy is cool all right so now we go here and we could just type in snowman body there you have it and so now the uh, focus point is the snowman right which is kind of nice so the background is the focus in a little and here I'm going to the um, to the render panel and just go to the sampling and increase the preview samples right so we can see a more accurate image here right nothing fancy but something a little more accurate now uh, I want to add another light all right let's duplicate the Sun and rotate it in the other side okay something like this because I want to create kind of a rim light in this border all right the main light is coming from here but here I want a rim light. So what I'm going to do is to go here, uh, probably deactivate the shadows because I don't want shadows to, to be thrown from this one or maybe yes, I don't know still. <laughs> so let's make it like more blue. All right, keep in mind that the snow reflects a lot of blue from the sky. So uh, lighting the scene in a, with a light blue color can be can, can be a, a good idea so let's make it really really slight and let's tweak it until we have this rim lighting maybe increase it don't cast the shadow and just rotate it so it's only a rim light and just change the color maybe try with white to see how it looks like just a bluish tone okay actually pick this light and rotate a little like this okay because if we create some shadow in this part we can increase the effect of the rim lighting okay but we have to be very careful because all right if we bring it from here it won't illuminate the floor a lot okay so I what I can do is to just uh, turn it down so the face will be darkened by the shadow of the hat but uh, we will see better the, the floor and stuff, okay? Because the light will come more uh, from the upside. Uh, now, what we need to do, what I will do, is to create a light here in the, for, for the face, okay? So this way, um, we can just let's go here, press dot in the numpad to just um, move that. And instead of sun, this will be a point light. So just move it here. As you can see now, we are lighting this area. Okay, but I don't want it to be that exaggerated. Just something like this here. And let's uh, disable the cat's shadow and increase the lighting. So as you can see doing this, uh, we gain some uh, lighting in the face and we are Okay, point lights uh, need a lot of lighting to, I mean, very big values to, to add. But uh, I don't want it to be really big because I don't want it to, to burn the area. Just to 
um, you know, kind of illuminate a little this area that will be darkened uh, otherwise. Because if we hide this light, you can see that it's completely dark. All right, so we unhide it and we have at least something slightly there. Now, what happens if we do the face with a kind of an orange color, like more warm? Right, we can gain some focus uh, and uh, get the catch better the viewers' eyes attention to this uh, to the area of the face. Let's move this light right here. Just decrease the its effect a little, and now actually bring it here. Twenty-five. Okay, something like that. I I don't want to spend a lot of time on that. Okay, so basically we have um, our basic lighting already, and uh, now we can start creating the uh, snow falling. All right, and for that we are going to use a particle system. So let's save the scene and let's go for the particle system. Okay, so for creating the particle system, what I'm gonna do is to actually, I want the snow to fall like, let's see, I want the snow to be falling, let's actually put this on full screen now, I don't need the render anymore for now, and I want it to be falling in this area something like that and actually make this a lot bigger right because if we go to the camera and press set uh, we cannot see the top of the cage all right and we actually uh, shouldn't see that as well so let's move it like that and uh, okay I think with this we are set up uh, so now what I'm gonna do is to create a new scene all right I will work on this in a new scene so Let's create a new scene, and this will be uh, snow particles. All right, this is so it's easier to to work on it. All right, and this will be the snowman. So we can press Control L and link this into the snow particles scene. All right, so this cage now will be in the snow particles as well. In the second layer because here is in the second layer as well and I'm actually going to switch it to the first layer or maybe the third layer all right so it's so it's here we have something else yeah the yeah the background is in the second layer okay so let's go to the snow particles and uh, let's actually go back and I want activate this camera and I want this camera to be as well in the other scene, in the snow particles. Now, if we move the camera or something in this scene, it, the, the changes will reflect in the snow particles because they are going to be linked. You can see that we have now here our... Right, but here in this scene, this is in the second layer. Let's move it to the third one. That's right, and the camera is here. Okay, so this is because now we can see the particles from the camera perspective to see how they look like so let's put the camera there and now let's actually model our snowflakes so for the snowflakes what I'm gonna do is to create let's see a plane alright and uh, let me let me think what, what I should do actually not a plane let's create a pentagon so a circle with five sides, that's right. And now what I will do is to go ahead and create um, something like this, extruding and scaling down. Um, let's press C to exit from the wireframe mode and press the slash in the numpad to go out on the, from the local view. 
I mean, to go into the local view. There we are in the local view. All right, so I will do this. And now let's create some kind of an interesting shape. All right, actually, let's work on this one as it is uh, easier to adjust to, a, to an axis. All right, with something like this, something like this. Okay. One there, another one there. And now let's create some interesting shapes. For example, let's extrude this um, like uh, here, for example, let's press control to adjust it to increment. All right, so now we can do the same with this and adjust it to increment and do a kind of a similar shape. Okay, now from here, let's extrude this uh, in the Y axis, like this, scale it down. And from here, again, do something like this. And with control again, adjust the increment so we can do the same from the other side. Something like that. Maybe we can push it a little farther, like, I don't know, like this, maybe. And take this down as well. Something like this, maybe. All right, not a lot of detail, actually, because, you know, it's not needed. Let's let these areas. It's not needed, and also it will create a lot of polygons in our final scene because we are going to duplicate it a lot of times. A lot of times. So let's actually select these ones, and uh, this one not. Bring them down. And bring this in. Okay. Even... We can just merge these areas. Select the first one, select the last one, Alt M at last, and it will be joined there. Okay. So now I can select these vertices here. And uh, what I do here is usually open the calculator, and I want to duplicate it this um, five times around. Okay, so what I will do is to actually go here and uh, select 360 divided into 5 and this is 72 degree all right 72 degree so remember that number and now what I can do is to actually spin them around the 3d cursor or uh, actually let's bring the 3d cursor to the center so shift s uh, cursor to center there we go and let's just try it we can do it manually with Shift D and uh, rotate it. I mean, press dot in the keyboard, rotate it around there, and we can move it like uh, right down 62, all right, and it will be there. And repeat this operation 72, that will be there. We can Shift D, right click, and Shift R to repeat the operation, and it won't uh, work. Okay, so we can do it like that, or we can go even faster. Select these guys and use the spin option, which is right here. So select the spin and there you can see a great effect. But this is not what we want. <laughs> so we want actually five steps in 360 degrees. We want the dupli, so they are duplicated. Okay, and uh, we are done. So now we can select these guys, F to create a face there. Again again, again. You could also select this face as well, duplicate it, and now remove the double double vertices. Okay, so now we have our snowflake. All right, something similar to this. And uh, let's call this snowflake. Very original, I'm a very original person. So let's call this snowflake. And now we have to apply this object to the particle system so it repeats uh, along the way. Let's then set up our particle system, and this is amazing because, uh, well, not amazing, but this is the first time I work with particles in a tutorial for Blender, so it is a nice point, a nice time. Okay, so let's go and uh, add a particle system, and we have to add it by clicking here and adding a new particle system. Let's call it Snow, and here in the settings, let's call it 
snow settings all right we are only going to have one particle system in the scene so this is not actually needed but uh, as i told you you know if i can i prefer to name things correctly all right let's increase the number of um, particles submitted and if we press uh, alt a you can see how it works and let's actually join these two guys because i want to work with this now okay so these are the particles that are already uh, being emitted now what i want to do is to emit them from the volume the reason why i created a cube uh, right in a normal scene i would probably create a plane on top of the scene and let the particles flow uh, fall down like in a real snow uh, a scenario what happens is that um, you know uh, if we do that we have to wait a lot of frames until the snow uh, reaches the floor and we can see it on camera so instead of that uh, see this will be for a still image um, I prefer to emit from the volume so we have already particles at the bottom as you can see as we start the animation we already have particles here uh, the downside of this is that the particles are being generated in front of the camera, which wouldn't work for an animation, but for a still image, uh, it will work. Um, so, okay, let's go ahead, and we have this on the volume. Okay, so let's go and uh, tweak this a little bit. So, we need to go here, and uh, first, let's select object into the render panel, and from the render, from the object uh, list, let's let uh, the snowflake. So now snowflakes are falling, as you can see, right? If we pause, let's see how we could go here to the rotation, activate the rotation, and um, activate the dynamic rotation, increase it a little bit, put it to random, all right? So it starts from a random rotation the velocity of rotation and here increase the random as well so now we have uh, our snowflakes falling down but they are not behaving actually like a real snow and um, what I want to achieve even if it's not a completely real movement because uh, this won't be an animation again uh, but I do want to achieve an, an effect of, uh, you know, some kind of the focusing of, uh, um, you know, moving blur, uh, motion blur. Uh, I, I didn't find the words. Uh, so, yeah, I want to achieve some motion blur. And uh, for that to work, I need the particles to go in different directions because right now everything is falling down more like rain, not snow, right? The snow moves like, uh, you know, more slowly and stuff so what i'm gonna do is to go to the top view actually we could move this out of this out of the view right put it down there and um let's go to the empty create a new empty and a plane axis it doesn't matter what you create okay but uh, uh, an empty works uh, fine so let's go here to the physics panel and activate the force field and instead of force let's use uh turbulence that's right now as you see uh this object was created in the last layer because I, I i selected the camera and stuff and it was in the in the last layer uh in order for this turbulence to work uh the force fields and the particle system uh need to be in the same layer so the particle system as you can see is in the third layer so we have to pick the plane axis press m to move it uh, to another layer and click on the third one so now this will work better um, in order to see it let's go here to the particles let's increase the lifetime all right if you can see the lifetime uh, is the number of frames that each particle stays on the on the view after that it will die and uh, disappear so if we increase this number particles will be alive for more frames something like 200 could work pretty fine so as you can see now they are falling down way too more all right uh, let's also increase the number of them and let's go select the plane axis 
there we are let's go here to the physics panel and increase the strength of the turbulence and see what happens all right you can see now how the particles are getting crazy so what i what i'm going to do for to in order to see this uh, better is to click here on this pin so even if we select the particle system to see it better um, the options here uh, keeps being the ones for the plane axis, which is exactly what I need. So this way the particles are moving crazily, uh, so I don't want it to be that much. We can increase the flow, so they move a little more slowly. All right, and with this, if we increase the size and stuff, we, uh, you know, we start getting effects like this, you know, in which the particles start to join in clusters and stuff like this. So what I just need is to, you know, particles move around uh, in a little cra crazy way. But not too much because I need them to keep falling. So let's reduce this. Just give them some strength, but let them keep, keep falling. And for that, we can reduce the flow. So the particles fall down, but at the same time, they are moving around. Let's go to the camera to see what's going on. All right, this is kind of, uh, yeah, we, we could keep working a lot on this, all right, and tweak the, uh, if we un unclick the pin, we can go to the particle system options. And there are, uh, as you can see here, a lot of options to, to work with, okay? But, um, well, I don't care too much at this point. And so let's go, one thing that I, indeed want to change is the size of this. So let's go here to the physics panel and reduce the size a little. Increase the random size so some snowflakes are bigger are bigger than the others. And there we are. Maybe reduce the mass. So they are they weight a lot less. As you can see now as they have less weight they stay there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is to select the turbulence and uh, decrease the flow again. So things uh, keep falling down and reduce the strength as well. So now everything moves a little crazy, but it is what I, what I need. Maybe increase this a little. Maybe we can uh, achieve a nice effect. Okay, so now uh, the snowflakes are falling down and uh, what I need to do is to select the snowflake, the original one, go to the materials, and add the snow material to it. So all these snowflakes have uh, that material. And actually, um, let's make it single and um, call it snowflake mat and uh, let's actually jump to cycles render uh, it was by default in blender uh, render uh, in this new scene but uh, I want it in cycles render so it's like this and instead of diffuse I want it to be emissive right because then uh, otherwise the snowflakes are going to appear like uh, darkened with the shadows and stuff and what I want is that the uh, snowflakes kind of uh, gets some attention so they will have uh, an emiss emissive uh, material, so they will appear completely white in the in the final render. And then we can probably tweak the amount of emission until we like it. All right, so uh, the next thing I want to do is to just select these two guys, right, the particle system and the plane axis, press Control L, and move them to the snowman scene. So now they are linked. And we should have particles here as well, exactly. So if we go here to the camera, and uh, we should actually go here and try to get rid of this emit emitter so we can see what's happening. Uh, so let's go here to display and activate here wire. That's right. Okay, so as you can see, now we have snow in our scene. T and N to get rid of those menus. And uh, now probably I can just go ahead and 
even increase a little more the amount of particles, like 10,000, just a little. Right, so we get more particles in the background. Okay, so let's uh, let's shoot a let's save the scene first of all, and let's uh, shoot a little render with the rendered mode and see what's happening. And okay, we see the emitter. So what we need to do is to go here to the render panel. There we go, and deactivate the emitter. So we see only the snowflakes. So as you can see, the snowflakes are uh, are in completely white because uh, we activated the, the um, emission for them. So this is, uh, this is kind of cool. And um, now what I have to do before launching a test render is go to the render panel and we have to activate the motion blur. And leave the shutter like it is. All right, let's see how the effect is. Now, um, what happens with the motion blur uh, is that it doesn't work in the viewer, in the in the 3D view. We need to get an actual render for uh, seeing its effect. So uh, before launching a render, let's go here and activate uh, 50. This will be enough for a test render and press uh, F12. Well, before pressing F12, let's go to the performance and uh, write down here 2056. As with GPU, I, I found that that is the good measure. All right. All right. <laughs> Something uh, failed, of course, obviously. You have to keep in mind that these particles are being generated on this frame. And uh, because of that, Blender doesn't know in which direction they are moving. So in order for Blender to know that, uh, we need to bake the particle system. So we need to go to the particle system options and in the cache panel, let's uh, create a new cache, call it uh, cache, yeah, or snow cache. And in the cache step, let's put it to one. All right, so it cached uh, every frame in the animation because here, as you can see, it's kind of cached every 10 frames. All right, but we need it to uh, be cached every single frame so Blender knows the uh, exact movement of each particle. So, uh, okay, let's keep it like that and bake all dynamics and just wait for Blender to finish until it's 100%, which is now, okay. And so now Blender doesn't have to calculate every frame, the particles, all right? They are already stored in the disk. So as you can see now, this is completely red, which means that this particle system is cached. Um, all right, so now we can just actually pick the frame that we like, something like that, and uh, F12. And let's see now what's happening with that snowflakes. So as you can see now, we have some motion blur on them, but I feel it's not enough. Let's increase it to the maximum. Let's see what happens. All right, this is probably too much. It looks like some kind of weird rain or something like that. So let's put it on one and see what happens. All right, this is much better, I think. And even a little less could be fine. All right, so leave it like this. And uh, now let's just set up the render layers. So. We have this background in the second layer. We have the particles in the third one. Uh, okay, that's fine. And the camera and the lights in the in this one. All right, so after checking out that we have all of that in, and in which layers they are, let's call this snowman scene. And this will render this, this, and this. Click on them by um, pressing shift so you can uh, just render them. Uh, and create a new render layer. This will be called background, and this will only render the second layer. All right. So here you have the layers that are uh, shown in the scene that are not hidden, and here you have the the layer that this render layer, this specific render layer, will see. All right. So uh, the first and the third one won't be uh, visible from this uh, render layer. And uh, finally, before launching the final render. 
Let's go here to the render panel. Increase the samples to something like 500, right? I will accelerate the render time so you don't have to wait. But, um, you know, I'm going for a high sample count so I can just uh, get rid of it. And uh, let's actually go here and uh, put this like, try it with one. Increase it a little bit to prevent fireflies. Okay, so something like two may work, maybe three. Okay, three is okay, I think. Four. Okay, leave it be like uh, four. We have to activate here the transparent option, all right? So in the uh, render layer with the snowman and not the background, the background will be completely transparent. You can see here the, the dots, all right? And so this way we can composite then very easily the, the background with the foreground. And uh, as the last thing I need to deactivate the simplify option. Okay, so it will take now some time. And uh, so in the final render, you know, we have all the displacement in this uh, in this texture. So let's save this again. Uh, this I, I do this, you know, when I when I save a file, you can save different versions. If you have them numbered, you can just uh, instead of writing down the, the new uh, name and stuff, if you press plus or less in the um, in the numpad, you can just add or quit, uh, you know, numbers to the version. And if the name is red, means that, you know, they are already taken. So 12 is a good one, enter, and there we go. Um, okay, so I think I'm fine. Let's just uh, check that this is okay. So in the render is five, okay. All right, so let's just uh, save this again and pick here the final size, 720. 100%, save it, and press F12, and wait for the final render. Okay, so our render is done. As you can see, we have two different layers. We have the background, and we have the snowman. This is fine, so now we need to go here to the compositor. Uh, where are you? Node editor, okay. And instead of the materials, I need to go to the compositor, uh, the compositing nodes. Activate use nodes and activate the backdrop. Go to the full screen, press N to get rid of this toolbar. And uh, now we have two different layers, right? I just press the Shift D to duplicate. And uh, this one will be the background. Um, here we are, the background. Okay, so now we need to mix these two layers. Uh, so let's go with an alpha over. This will be on top and this will be behind. Let's uh, control uh, shift click to see uh, automatically activate the viewer. And you can see how we have uh, all our render and we have the uh, snow falling down. So what I wanna do is to tweak this a little. Um, for example, this background image, I want to actually blur it out a little. Like 20, let's try with 20, or maybe a little less. Right, because it's a little defocused with the, um, uh, you know, with the depth of field, but uh, I want to defocus it more so it kind of appear more farther away than, the, than this kind of planes of snow, okay? Um, also, let's just uh, apply some color correction. All right, Let, let's color correct the foreground first, or maybe this first, make it brighter. So let's go here, RGB curves, put it put them here. And there you have it, a little brighter. It fits better. Shift A, color. RGB curves and now color correct the foreground, make it brighter also, and probably add some blue to it so it fits better with the background. Maybe decrease the reddish color 
and um, yeah, that could work. The reason why I use the alpha over and not the, the, the mix, normal mix, is that, you know, this one uh, doesn't do a very good job in some areas, all right? We just set it up uh, the opposite. So here you have the basic uh, effect of it. And if we activate the alpha, you can see how the mm, the focused, uh, the blurred areas of the snowflakes are not being merged uh, correctly, all right? So that's why I prefer to use the alpha over in these situations. Um, okay, now let's color correct this scene and let's do it with the RGB curves and uh, give it contrast. Increase the bluish tones and uh, decrease the reddish tones, something like that. And I think that's pretty cool. Now we can add more stuff like a filter. Um, da, 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 where are you? Distort. Um, lens distortion. There we go. It's actually pressed. Press V so we can see the full image and the borders and increase the distortion a little and the dispersion a little bit as well. So we have some color aberration in the borders, but very slight one. Right, like 0 0.02 would be enough. And now let's uh, activate fit so it gets a little bigger to cover the borders. That's fine. That's fine. Now, what else can we do? Probably add a vignette. So let's add a mix. This will be um, black color. And let's create a matte, uh, let's see, an ellipse mask. Let's increase the white and the height. Just Plug it in here. Click on subtract. Actually add. Well, it's time I do this differently. You know, it's just kind of uh, intuitive. So now I just need to invert the color, and uh, that's how it works. <laughs> All right. So after this, I want to apply a blur. Very big blur effect there we have it maybe now uh, apply an RGB curves to just increase the contrast so we have we have it darker in the borders and wider there and uh, this will be in multiply mode which is mostly the same but well Okay, and uh, I think we are done with this render. So, um, just uh, of course one more thing: just connect the multiply to the composite one, right? So we can uh, render it. And now, just another one, uh, a last thing. Okay, is that in the render of the introduction, uh, you can see how the camera uh, floats and the snowflakes are completely static. That is very easy to, to do. Now, let's, let me just save the scene. Uh, so, Control shift s plus in the numpad, Enter. There we go. We deactivate this to solid and go here. So, what I need to do is to just select the uh, particle emitter and press uh, Control a and click on Make Duplicates Real. This way, uh, Blender will uh, make the particles uh, to be like single objects. Now keep in mind that the uh, particle emitter, a mirror will uh, will still be there. And I don't know what I just did. Oh, okay. I I, I don't know what I did. <laughs> okay, so Alt A, and it keeps emitting particles. So what I have to do is to just delete the emitter, all right, or hide it or whatever. Right in this case, I just deleted. And uh, now if we go to the camera. You can see that if you move the camera around, the snowflakes are floating 
and uh, you know if you press alt a they are no no moving so you can just capture them like if they were uh, time frozen so that's it and uh, let's go here again so I hope you liked it I hope you enjoyed it um, you know I, I kind of thought it was uh, fun to do something with snow as uh, we are seeing all over the world some uh, places with a lot of snow and very very cold so uh, yes just just wanted to do this and uh, well uh, if you like it please subscribe uh, comment leave me comments or send me emails whatever you want and uh, yeah see you in the next tutorials and happy blending I didn't see that in the first part all right so so here is uh, twice happy blending again <laughs>